Hey guys, it is Nick here with another Nick's Topics Dragon Ball What If Topic video for today. And today, we are getting into part 9 of What If Garen Became a Z Fighter. Now, to recap the last episode, we saw the entrance of Mega Frieza, and we actually get to see Frieza in his fourth form for the first time. Because on Namek, he almost died in basically a discombobulated version of all of his forms, and his original body was beyond help. So, with the help of King Cold and everybody else, he was then Mega Frieza, and actually got the look of his fourth form. Future Garen was the one to take both him, his army, and his father out. Now, we actually get a good look-see at the future timeline rather than before in the What If Hercule Was a Z Fighter, where it was basically just skimmed over, and I apologize for that. I basically just left it up to you guys for the thoughts. Now, as for future Goku, he does survive, because the heart virus, I like to, to theorize that he got it from Yardret, whereas many people argue that that's bullcrap, I think that it's the most plausible outcome. Anyways... He survives and doesn't get the heart virus, but still dies to the androids. Luckily enough for our future heroes, though, future Chien and future Gohan and Piccolo, along with future Garen, all survive. And instead of going out and facing the androids head on, future Garen wants to be the one to time travel, while the others do what future Trunks and Mai did in the Goku Black arc and save people and hunker down below. And this is way earlier in the future timeline, mind you. Now, there's no reason for the heart medication because Goku never contracted the heart virus. But future Garen's not going to leave without just telling him about the androids and stuff. He's going to tell him a lot of other things. For one thing, he tells Goku to up the powers of his Super Saiyan form. Make it stronger. Because he's going to need it. Because... His original Super Saiyan power wasn't enough to beat the androids, so he needs to up it, which he does. He also tells Gohan that he needs to get Super Saiyan early, or at least get accustomed to using the form early. And Gohan takes this to heart, with everybody else encouraging the thought too, especially Piccolo being his mentor. And he also tells his past self, past Garen, the one we know, to... Up his Kaioken and definitely train every one of his abilities. Because what he saw him do to Mega Frieza, going all out like that, that's what he needs to do. But more. He wants him to be stronger, which Garen takes to heart. Now, to discuss more important plot points, Baby Trunks is still born in both the future and this timeline that we know of right now. Because... Even though Vegeta is dead since the Saiyan arc, Yamcha and Bulma still get together, and I feel that the kid would still be Trunks, except for the fact that he would be an Earthling rather than a Saiyan. So, or I'm, I'm sorry, a half Saiyan. Unfortunately, though, for the future version of Trunks, since he's an Earthling, yeah, unfortunately he dies. Because, as I said, he's an Earthling. And Yamcha died alongside. Now, the time skip, the three-year time skip, up to the point where we meet Android 19 and Dr. Jiro on an island nine miles off of South City, gets to that point, and Yamcha still gets impaled by Jiro, but with the small use of Kaioken, the help of Garen and Goku, with all the time of being on, like, the capsule ship and Namek and stuff, he does put up a better fight, but Dr. Jiro has knowledge of Kaioken, and it doesn't really help in Yamcha's favor. But besides that, the introduction to 19 and Dr. Jiro goes per normal, with Dr. Jiro giving the spiel about how he's been monitoring the group since the beginning. But little does he know that Goku and Garen, they got a few surprises in store. Specifically, the powers of Super Saiyan, which Goku then shows off almost immediately, fighting 19 the same exact way that he did per normal. But, with the only differences being that even though 19 still absorbs his Kamehameha Blast, 
he's, Yamcha and everybody is there, and Goku does not contract the heart virus, so that does still help him in his favor. And Giren is there to assist Goku. Now, why would Dr. Duro let Giren just waltz in and fight against 19? Effectively, 19 being tag-teamed. Well, Dr. Duro would be teamed up against... would be teamed up on against all the other Z fighters. So I feel that this would work in Giren's favor. Giren, using the powers of his gum and everything that he has worked on throughout these three years, taking his future self's words to heart, becoming effectively a Kaioken times 50 reptile and showing it off against 19. And with the collective might of Super Saiyan Goku and Giren working in harmony, since they knew each other from the start of Dragon Ball pretty much, 19 is effectively eliminated once Giren and Goku start showing off the fruits of their labor. Because remember, Super Saiyan Goku, he's not just in grade 1 here, he upped his Super Saiyan. So at max, he's nearing the possibility of grade 3, so 19 is toast. And as for Dr. Jiro... He tries to absorb everybody else's life energy, but with Yamcha and pretty much everyone at this point having the knowledge of the energy absorption, they're able to avoid it rather handily. Dr. Duro not being focused on the fact that 19 just got killed. So, he is more distracted whenever Piccolo takes the advantage of Dr. Duro trying to steal his energy and effectively slices off his hand like he did in the original story, with everybody else then seizing the opportunity and attacking him. Gohan helping out whenever he can if Dr. Duro gets too close to Piccolo because, you know, it's a master-student bond and it's, it's just natural that Gohan would assist him in that matter. Now, Dr. Duro now just realizing that 19 has been diced and seeing that he has no way to counter any of these people, decides to escape. But before he does, he leaves with the revelation that number 17 and 18 will be here soon, and they will kill all of them. And then he escapes. And this is happening in the wasteland, not the mountains. So, that means future... Or, uh, Past Bulma, the Bulma we know now, actually gets to the group a lot sooner because they're in a different area, also with future Giren, and Dr. Jero's lab being revealed. But as I said, Dr. Jero gets to the lab sooner because he because they're in the wasteland and not the mountain range. So he actually gets to the lab not too, too much sooner, but soon enough that it's more noticeable than in the original story where the group was pretty much behind him. But, unfortunately for the doctor, just because he got to his lab sooner, he still gets offed by 17, and 16 is awakened inside the laboratory. So, by the time the group even gets to the lab, 17, 16, and 18 are all awakened. And future Garen tells everybody that these are the androids that they should be worried about. But the green one? He has no memory of him. They never had to fight an android like him. And it's just more time nonsense. More things have changed. But unfortunately for the group... <sighs> they're no match. Even with Goku and Giren's full powers, they're no match. Even with Goku's additional training, mind you. So the group is forced to hunker to Kami's lookout. Sort of like they did in my What If Hercule Was a Z Fighter. With the only exception being Piccolo Jr. is there alongside Kami and decides to merge with him. Now, we still get Dende as a guardian. Now you might be asking... Nails around. Why don't we get him as the Guardian? Well, because he wanted to stay on Namek. He wants to stay there to protect the people. And as much as he would like to merge with Piccolo or become the Guardian of another Earth, 
He can't do that. And plus, he's not the dragon clan. He's a warrior clan, so it wouldn't it wouldn't serve much. And as for the rest of the group, they go into hyperbolic time chamber, like we saw in my last story, and get massive gains. Now, everybody, earthling wise, ups their Kaiokens and all of their techniques. And as for Giren, him and Goku and Gohan all train together. And Goku and Gohan, in particular, Goku gets accessibility a little bit to the powers of Super Saiyan 2, having gone past Mastered Super Saiyan and just getting a small taste of Super Saiyan 2, with Gohan not being too far behind. And as for the rest of the group, well, suffice it to say that if you saw my last story, the androids are effectively no match. The only difference being that the future timeline is a thing now. And you'll see more of what I mean in a second here. Because the story is going to take a little bit of a turn here. While the androids are being attacked by the the Z fighters, Imperfect Cell is still around because the future timeline exists. So that means that Imperfect Cell's around absorbing people in cities waiting for the right moment to strike. And Kami still sensed this before he fused with Piccolo. So while the Z Fighters, or, you know, the other Z Fighters, are fighting the androids, Piccolo decides to combat and confront Cell like he did in the original story, with the only exception being that there is... Everybody else is fighting the android. It's basically like a different scenario. Like, everybody's doing other things, and there's no, like, Krillin and Trunks, like, coming in and there's no one really like keeping tabs on the fight like before and unlike before after getting the information that he needs out of cell piccolo knowing what everybody else is doing knows that the androids are dead anyway and even tells cell this flat out and then he powers up to his full power throwing off his turban and cape and effectively erasing Cell from existence. So, future Cell is no more, not even getting a chance to get his perfect form. Now, you might think that I did future Cell dirty here, and you might be right, but consider everybody else's training, and even without Vegeta, they're still doing good in this saga. And as for the bunker with Cell, since the future timeline exists and future Giren's around, the underground bunker and the revelation of Cell means that present Cell dies here. So there's no present Cell nonsense like before. Plus, that wasn't too big a revelation whenever I revealed it in What If Hercule Was a Z Fighter anyway. So the android and Cell arc is effectively over. And... Kind of quickly, too. With future Giren getting his time machine and getting ready to travel back to his time, ready to combat the androids with everybody else one last time. Thinking that his friends back in the future, and with his training now, being enough to finally put them down. Before he goes, he has one last sparring match and one last friendly interaction with his past self. And effectively... And effectively bids them adieu. Hercule, also, since there was no Cell games, and since he's just an original weak champion and not a boss like my other story, does not get the credit for killing Cell and is a lesser champion than before. Goku and Gohan during this time skip, since they're both alive, get to master and effectively use Super Saiyan 2 at will, having better knowledge of it now since Goku actually, since they didn't really get to use it against the androids. And peace is once again restored. But the Boo arc is soon to happen. And that's where we're going to be leaving things for the moment. So, what did you guys think about this episode? What do you guys think's going to happen in the next part?
Do you think that Majin Buu will actually come to pass in this story? Or do you think that the threat of him will not happen at all like before? Leave a comment down below. I hope you guys are enjoying this story so far, and I will see you guys next time.